So guess what? Another unboxing video from Downing. What has he got this time? I don't know, about six, seven months ago now, it was a 3D printer. But today, we've got a very upgraded CNC machine. Very similar to this little guy, which has been awesome for the past three or four years for me. Started having a little issue with its x-axis, probably just the wire or something, but it was enough of a push to uh, make me want to upgrade. So, um, came in yesterday, haven't had a chance to open it, so I'm just going to set it up and we'll do a little time lapse of the unboxing here. All right, so there it is. At least this is the uh, main portion without any of the motors or anything on it yet, but liquid cooled spindle, and that is a massive table. Dear Lord. Put my little spot up there is big enough for this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna break. I didn't do as much of an unboxing as I wanted to, but this was kind of a pain to move around, get up here, and whatever, so. Um, it wasn't exactly packaged all that well, and quality off the bat, I can already see a couple of things. Nothing major, but, uh, you know, this isn't flush between the plates, and this actually overhangs a bit. You kind of figure it'd be nice and squared up, but it's not. But... Really, like I said, I'm not going to pick it apart yet until I actually get into using it. But yeah, it's a water-cooled spindle, which is really nice. So I'll be able to start doing aluminum, and it is beefy. I mean, in comparison to the other one I had. <clears throat> and the ball screws on there, too, are you know, either 5 8 or 3 quarter, A lot bigger than the ones that I had on my tiny machine. This is the pump. For the water spindle control its own spindle controller it's not actually built into the box like the other one so this is just the power and the pump and the stepper motors which are beefy as well i mean these things are heavy probably weigh about three four pounds a piece and then the software the basic mounting hardware clamping stuff stuff i already had for the most part but yeah, um, I'm probably going to leave it here for the night. Set it up first thing in the morning and try and get something printing, but I got a lot more uh, bench work to do so I can get everything where it needs to be. Now I know the size and everything. But anyway, that's coming up. Alright, so we're a couple weeks later, and I finally have the machine set up, um, at least well enough so that I can start making some test cuts and uh, just trying to work out all the kinks of the system that I've got. But the new setup is decent. Uh, down below, we got the PC in that box. We got the control box that controls the steppers and the pump, and then the reservoir for the pump for the liquid-cooled spindle. So um, it's been kind of a challenging process to get this thing set up, to be all honest. Um, I've done a few test cuts with it already and I'm still not 100% pleased with the results. Um, and I'm just going to try and attribute that to the learning curve of you know, having a much bigger machine. Obviously this gantry is three or four times the size of my other one. The ball screws and the uh, rails are all a lot bigger so it takes a lot more force for these things to move back and forth. And it was giving me a lot of uh, stalling issues on the y-axis specifically. Um, when it would jog too fast. So the actual jog speed that is programmed into Mach 3 by default has to be adjusted um, whenever you're making a cut otherwise if it gets towards the middle of the machine and it's going too fast it's just gonna stop. So slower speeds do seem to fix that issue. I'm not sure if it's something that was supposed to be that way but hey um, right now I'm just trying to get it so that it will uh, 
do these couple of jobs that I gotta get done and then I can screw with it later. I mean, it is a good machine and it, it is well built, but, you know, just trying to dial it in and the lack of clear instructions that came with it was a pain. Um, one of the big issues for anybody out there who might end up buying one of these is if it comes with this VFD spindle controller without the knob, it's gonna become or it's gonna come with the default as knob in there, so you actually have to go into the settings and change it. Um, but <laughs> the only manual I could find for those settings was in Chinese, so it had to be uh, translated and deciphered uh, via Google Translate. And though that worked, it took quite a while just to figure out what the default settings were and what they meant. Um, so I'm going to include uh, the settings that I have set up for this thing in the description just in case anyone else has one of these and bangs their head against the wall as much as I did trying to figure it out. But the big problem that I'm having with it right now though is just though it looks like it's cutting decent, the circles aren't perfect. You know, I can get by past the stalling issue and so forth, but not being able to cut a perfect circle is really going to uh, put a kink in things if I can't get that figured out. But, you know, like I said, I got a little more t uh, time to play with it, and we'll see what I can come up with, and I can probably still do the job that I need to do uh, with it as it is, but, um, you know, just for the sake of getting things perfected. But anyway, that's it. That's my new machine. And, um, you know, we'll hopefully get these things sorted out and go from there. But thanks for watching.